So, how much Megan Fox is enough Megan Fox in a horror movie? Let's review Night Teeth. Night Teeth stars Sidney Sweeney, Debbie Ryan, Alexander Ludwig, Megan Fox, and is directed by Adam Randall. What's up guys? Um, it's kind of the resurgence of Megan Fox because she did Till Death recently, which was good, which is pretty decent movie. Not great, but it was it was good. It was a, it was a fitting return of Megan Fox to horror. I think she's great for horror movies and she has the potential to be like a current scream queen if she plays the cards right. I think they did a good job with the trailer for this movie. You know I've complained about trailers recently, but uh, they didn't make you think that Megan Fox was the main character of this movie. And I think that was a smart move because you would go into this movie really pissed off because um, don't expect much Megan Fox in this movie at all, okay? I'll say that right now. We're hitting every single one of these parties tonight and you need to get to the last stop by morning. But uh, anyway, before we get into this, let's give you a, a quick plot synopsis. Um, Jorge, is it Jorge or is it George, Georgie? Something like George Lindenberg, he plays uh, Benny. He's our main character of the movie. And his brother, Jay, is in this situation because at the beginning of the movie, Jay's girlfriend, uh, we don't know if she's killed or she's attacked or something like that by these vampires. And so Jay enlists his brother, Benny, to drive these two vampires around. And he tells him, you tell them you're me. Act like you're me, which was kind of a weird thing. But anyway, the, the main point of this movie is Benny is pretty much a chauffeur for these two vampire chicks. Blair and Zoe, played by Debbie Ryan and Lucy Fry. And it's kind of like the world's end where they're just bouncing from club to club to club. And his job, Benny's job, is just to drive them from place to place to place. And so they can cause all this carnage and do whatever. And the guy that they're working for is Victor, played by Alfie Allen, uh, Theon. Theon Greyjoy, right, from Game of Thrones. Uh, he looks just like Mick Jagger to me. He's kind of pissed off at the, the current truce between the vampires and uh, the humans. And so he wants to kind of step out of bounds and take control and stuff like that, right? So this movie should be like graphic and bloody and, you know, no, not, not really, not at all. And even in the trailer, there's like a scene where Benny, you know, he's being toyed with by uh, the, these club guys, you know, the bouncers. And Blair's supposed to be like the cool chick who comes up and, you know, it looks like she's going to like make out with him in front of them. We've seen this in movies before too, actually, where they're like super hot, cool chick, uh, makes out with kind of the nerdy guy to make him look cool. This movie is really just a mixture of a lot of different other movies kind of thrown together in a, in a pot, you know? But I think the key thing here is the worker vampire that's, you know, down the, the chain trying to uh, make a name for himself and really just try to gain some control. That's kind of what I was excited about other than Megan Fox actually being in this and being a vampire. I think Megan Fox would be perfect in a vampire movie. She had kind of like vampire traits in Jennifer's body. So I was hoping that they would utilize that in this and she's literally in one scene. That's it. And one of my problems is with that scene, not just because of how little of her you see, but the aftermath of that scene without going into any spoilers, there should be some like bloodshed and some violence and some chaos, but they don't show it at all. They just go right to the next scene and you just assume it, you know? So I was like, wow, what a freaking gyp. You know, this is a vampire movie. They should get like graphic and crazy and, you know, give us what we want. And I know some of you, you don't mind a vampire movie that kind of pulls back a little bit on the violence. And you can do that as long as you have really, really fun and interesting characters. And I don't think in this movie they go for the jugular, I guess, so to speak. They play it safe quite a bit, actually. You know, and I, this is a problem I see a lot these days in, in movies. You know, it, this could be like one of those... CW TV movies. That's what it kind of feels like. It gets a little edgy here and there from time to time, but not so much. And I've already like dipped my big toe into the cons uh, because I was kind of annoyed with this movie by the time I got done with it because it's one of those cases where there was so much potential. I wanted to watch the movie. I wanted to enjoy this movie so bad, but they just did not deliver. But before I go crazy and go even further, I'll say there were things that I did like about it. 
Benny was a good character. Immediately, I liked this guy quite a bit. This is a guy that you want to succeed. You want to end up being the cool guy that wins. I think George Lindenborg did a good job of just making this character very likable and making us root for him. He's a likable actor, and you know, that's something that you either have it or you don't. You know, kind of like Michael J. Fox. I think Michael J. Fox is the ultimate example of like a very likable actor. This guy's like that too. I was rooting for him the whole time. And they're trying to kind of make this like a, um, um, like a teen love story, even though they're not teens, but it has that vibe to it because one of the vampires is more on the good side, um, Blair. And then the other one, Zoe, she's just very carefree and she is probably my favorite character in this movie. Uh, this is the one that doesn't hold back the most, you know? And I had a good time. I think Lucy Fry gave it her all in this role. I think she did a really good job, actually. It's not really her fault, it's just the script's fault. They don't go as far as they should go. And I do like that these, these main vampires weren't just stereotypical. They had their own personalities. One of them was kind of a loose cannon. Uh, and, and the other one was one that you kind of liked. And then they tried to make this little love story out of it. Didn't really care for the love story aspect of it too much. You know, everything was just kind of blah with this movie. Beautiful set design though. Had all those beautiful colors that we like today, you know, like the blues and the purples and just very euphoric looking. You know, that's, that's the look that they were going to, for, which is perfect for a vampire movie. Now, diving further into the things I don't like about this movie is that I'm thinking of movies like Blade and our main villain in this movie, uh, Victor. This guy wanted to be Deacon Frost so bad. It was pretty much a Deacon Frost type of character because if you remember in Blade, Deacon Frost, he was part of this vampire society, but he didn't like the rules. He didn't like what was going on and trying to coexist with the humans. Uh, he wanted to play by his own rules. That's kind of what they were going for with this Victor character, but man, he doesn't even hold a candle to Steven Dorff's uh, performance and that character of Deacon Frost. I think Deacon Frost, one of the most underrated um, horror villains I, I've ever seen. I love Deacon Frost. And when you try to replicate that character in this movie, uh, you're gonna fall on your face unless you really go for the jugular. And this one, yeah, there are some like R-rated moments in the movie, but it just barely scratches the surface of an R rating. You know, it doesn't really go as far as it should go. And I figure if you're gonna go for an R rating, Go for an R rating, you know, go for broke. Uh, but instead you're left with this movie that you're gonna forget in like 15 minutes, you know, after it's over. And you know, unfortunately when you go back and look at like Megan Fox's like horror uh, offerings, this is one that you're gonna completely forget. You know, it, it might, you'd be like, oh, that's right. She did star like in this little, like why do such a small little part and not even capitalize on it? She did really nothing in the movie. So. Such a shame. So if you guys are here for Megan Fox, you're not gonna get that much of it. So in the end, guys, I know I'm shitting all over this movie. I It was okay. I'm gonna give it like a super low humdrum. Almost a two hours loss, but I did like the main character and I think it could have been a lot better for sure. So anyway, guys, let me know your thoughts on Night Teeth. Looking forward to hearing them. Some of you guys might have fun with this movie. I don't know. Also, be sure to come over to Killer Flicks where we talk horror all day and every day on Fridays. We do Free for Fridays. Follow my drum drums on all my socials. Support me on Patreon. Buy me a coffee. Anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching. Have a good day. And drum drum out.